Hey, over here, my name's Hemingway Jones, and welcome to the channel. Today, I'm down here, because we're gonna talk about something very small, the Kaveco Lilliput Fountain Pen. Today we're talking about the Kaveco Lilliput Fountain Pen. And what makes this pen interesting? Here we are at Kaveco's website where we find the Kaveco Lilliput Fountain Pen in fire blue. You see that it's around 170 euro and they give you all the different choices. You can link off of here some nice pictures and it shows you the different nibs that it comes in with the description. There's also some accessories, a case, the clip, not too happy about the clip, we'll speak about that later, and this calligraphy nib, which I am very curious about. I haven't tried the calligraphy nib yet. But now, if we look at it on an American website, Goulet Pens, one of my favorites, it's 170 US dollars. So the exchange rate doesn't quite work out dollar for euro there. So Goulet Pens has it in an extra fine. There's some very nice photography showing the different variations of the finish. It is such a beautiful pen, although small. The finish is amazing. Goulet Pen currently has extra fine, fine, and medium nibs in stock, although the nibs are very easy to change. They just screw in and out. It also takes a short standard international cartridge, and you can see all the different colors available for it. Pretty much any color you could possibly dream of. Of course, when you get the Kaveco Lilliput, it comes in this wonderful sardine tin case. I love these. It comes with a little brochure and the sticker, and then the pen. And when you first get it, it will have a cartridge in it that's not yet inserted. I've had this for quite some time. So I have the cartridge inserted, but sometimes they do get stuck in the barrel when you first get it. So you just give it a good whack against your hand. It'll come loose and then you can insert it into the feed. You'll hear a little pop and you'll be good to go. Ready to write. It's an absolutely brilliant pen with absolutely beautiful packaging that you can upcycle and use for many things, not least of which is as a pen case. This is the Kaveco Lilliput with the fire blue finish. It has a gorgeous medium nib. If it's not the smallest fountain pen on the market, it's certainly one of the smallest. And it's so amazing how it can fit in almost any pocket. It is the tiniest pen that I own. The next largest is the Waterman 52 and a half, which I think is quite small. This is really small. Now that's in its closed form, so it makes it very, very portable. The other thing that's very impressive is you open it up and it becomes a normal size pen, as you would expect, but it also has this fantastic medium nib. So it's diminutive size does not change the fact that it's a real serious incredibly engineered writing instrument. It's just a great pen. Put together well, beautiful fit, finish. Let's go through all the things that make this interesting and why I think you should consider adding it to your collection. Let's talk a bit about the roots and history of the Kaveco brand. So Kaveco spans back to 1883, when it was known as the Heidelberger Federhalter Fabric, and my apologies to the German language. They opened their doors in a backyard carpenter shop in Heidelberg, Germany. Now during the 1890s, they began to produce their own eyedropper style pens and mechanical pencils. Since 1903, Kaveco has been producing fountain pens. In 1913, the first Kaveco Sport went into production, which is a very small, concise pen that was then marketed to sportsmen and to military officers. 
We spoke about a brass Caveco sport on this channel already. 1921, Caveco had an approximate annual production then of 130,000 fountain pens and employed over 600 people. Lever fountain pens were also added to production. Many of the classic Caveco fountain pens were either lever filled or piston filled, something I hope they get back to very soon. Of course, the Great Depression came in 1930 and with it, problems for Caveco. From then on, it was bought by another company who I will spare you my attempt at pronouncing. And that company then downsized it and produced a more concise product line. Friedrich Grub would lead the company for the next 30 years. At that time, the current logo was developed. And that logo is still used today across the brand. From its pens to its gorgeous tin boxes that they come in. During World War II, the lack of materials available and the lack of workers almost led to a complete shutdown in production. At the end of the war, they were granted permission to resume production. The design of the product range was modernized and made to look slimmer and more streamlined. In 1994, cosmetic company Gutberlet purchased Caveco, all of its rights, machines, and logos, and resurrected the brand, introducing a new line based on the old designs. This is the Caveco that we know today. So I have to admit, when I first got this pen and I opened the package and I saw its size, I almost laughed. I mean, it was so much smaller than what I had expected, even though I'd read about it online. It's just that shocking. However, that same size ends up being one of its greatest strengths. What makes this pen great is it can fit anywhere. It can fit into your pocket to the point where you'll forget to take it out at the end of the day and then go looking for it and realize it's in your pants pocket. I can't think of another fountain pen that can do that. It can fit next to a notebook. It can fit inside many notebooks. It's easily tossed into a bag. If anything, you'll have trouble keeping track of it. It's that small. Just to show you how small this fountain pen is, Here's one of my earbuds. Here's the whole case. Here's the Lilliput compared to my keys. My house key and the key to my Jeep Grand Cherokee. As small as this pen is, and it is, it does get to a normal size once you put it together. So you simply screw it like that and it rests very comfortably, very nicely in your hand for very, very comfortable writing. <music> Let's look at the Lilliput closed next to our tape measure. And we're right about at three and seven eighths. If we open it, we're at a much more manageable five inches. Now let's compare it next to our Montblanc 149. Everyone knows the size of that pen. So you can see it's considerably smaller. Now let's compare it with it opened. And you'll see that it is also considerably smaller, but not so small that you can't write with it comfortably. This Fire Blue is a gorgeous finish on tempered steel. It's hand torched, so you get these variations from brown to yellow to blue to reds, and each one is different and individual. I've heard that over time it may wear off, but certainly when you initially get the pen, and I've had this for a few months now and have been carrying it almost every day, it is a hardy finish that is showing no signs of fading or changing. Look at this amazing color variation. The threads and the grip. Here's a nice shot of that gorgeous Caveco nib. The engineering of this pen is so precise. It's so impressive how it goes together, how well the threads are engineered, the gorgeous finish. It's a very impressive pen. It's 
So it's very comfortable to write with. The threads from the cap are a nice resting area for your fingers. And it sort of just rests against your hands while you use it. Very, very comfortable. Since we're looking at a small pen, let's use a small notebook. This is the Claire Fontaine Reporter's Notebook. So this then is the test. How does the pen actually write? And I'll have to say, it's quite smooth. This is why I prefer medium nibs. Medium nibs give you a nice line, some line variation, and have incredible smoothness. The Kaweco nib is exceptional and is one of my favorite pens to write with. Let me tell you one of the things that's really great about this pen. You could pull this pen out virtually anywhere and start writing with it. You could be waiting for your food to be ready, waiting for a bus. You could be hanging out waiting for your girlfriend, whatever it is. Now it's not gonna help you find a piece of paper, but at least you'll have something you can write with. You can doodle, whatever else. I mean, it's just that easy to carry around with you, that convenient. Okay, so it's a couple hours later, I'm at the playground and here it is, right in my pocket. Don't even feel it. The other thing great about this pen is I don't always like to use other people's pens, so I always have this on me. That's pretty convenient. It's great for signing checks or whatever. This pen is also great for traveling or for hiking. If you're hiking somewhere, you don't want to carry a lot of weight, you can throw this in your backpack. You won't feel it. Same thing if you go on a plane, throw this on your carry-on. You won't feel it at all. Strap it to your journal. You're good to go. I could see this surviving easily a week long trip to Europe or somewhere. Be a great, perfect travel pen. Especially if you carry a lighter travel journal, something like a moleskin, and you're somewhere in a piazza and you're sitting at a cafe and you want to write a few notes, maybe the name of the wine you're drinking or something along those lines. It's so easy to just have your moleskin on your inside pocket, have this pen in your pants pocket. You wouldn't feel it. It makes it very, very easy for you to take notes, write, to journal anywhere you are. Anywhere, virtually anywhere. I can't think anywhere it wouldn't be good. Might have some trouble getting through a metal detector. But once you show them what it is, you should be okay. I mean, maybe that's something. One great thing about Kaweco too is you can unscrew the nib and simply screw a new one in. So it's very easy to replace if you find you don't like the medium, maybe you wanna try the calligraphy nib or something else. So it's nice to have a customizable pen too, especially in such a small, concise package. I really think everyone needs to own one of these pens. I think it's that good. Another pro to this pen are the Kaweco nibs. They write incredibly smoothly. Now I've used several, I prefer the medium. I think it flows nicer than the fine, but that's personal preference. Another pro is its size. You really can put this anywhere. Here it is with a mole skin. So you could strap it to here. You wouldn't even feel it. Put it in your pocket, your back pocket, your purse, whatever it is you carry, any kind of bag. You're not going to feel this. It's very light for being metal and it's very easy to stow. Another pro is the construction. It's very well made. The threads work very smoothly. The finish is gorgeous, well done. It, it, um, the feed is fantastic. The nib is placed correctly. It feels really nice in your hand. The threads here give you a bit of texture as you're writing. So it's, it's a very well-made pen. You feel very confident using it. It's not going to fall apart. Okay, let me show you how great this is for EDC. So I have right now in my jeans pocket, my Jeep Cherokee car key, my um, Apple earbuds case. I should probably get a case for that. Oh, my Swiss Army nail clippers. These things are awesome. Everyone should have these. These are great. I'm gonna do a video on these. They're so good. Um, oh, my Benchmade pocket knife, bailout. Very important. And the Kaweco Lilliput. You can get all of these items in one normal jeans pocket. What makes this really great is it's not some special, tiny, diminutive nib. 
It's a full size medium, in this case, nib, that writes like any other medium from the Kaveco line. That's pretty amazing. All in one small, concise, easy to carry, easy to use package. So it's certainly gotta be a con that it's so small. Although it's also one of its greatest strengths. So there's a bit of a contradiction there, but make sure it works for your hand. My hands are a bit on the large side, not gigantic by any means, and it works for me. And that's including pretty extended writing sessions. I find myself using this pen when I take my journal out. I either use this or the Brass Sport, depending on whether or not I want to carry it more comfortably. So the size has to work for you. Another thing is in this particular model, the fire blue finish is very expensive comparatively, but you can get it in stainless steel. It's the same pen, it's just a finish issue. So that's something to consider as well. Another con is it's a little on the fiddly side. I mean, once again, it has to do with its basic design. It's screwed together, which makes it very tough and very durable for carrying it around. But you do have to unscrew it quite a few times, three or four times, screw it in maybe more than three or four times. And then you have your pen. You saw me do it there, it's fairly quick, but it is a bit of an operation if you're going back and forth, using it a lot. So that's a con as well. Like all Kaveco pens, this one is shipped with one of their cartridges. And I'm not even going to bother trying to find a converter. When this cartridge is empty, I'm going to flush it out and put a different color ink into it. But um, it works fantastically. The ink flows very smoothly to the feeder and out through the nib. Let's talk about another negative. You have to buy the clip for a few dollars extra and then it slides onto the pen. It doesn't do that great of a job of clipping and it rolls right off. Now I don't have the clip for this one, so it'll just roll away on my desk. So you do have to keep an eye on it. I do, however, have the clip for the Supra and what happens is it just pops right off. So it's kind of useless. It, it should be a little bit more integrated. So the one big disappointment with Kaveco is the clip. And without a decent clip, it can just simply roll away. With the small pen, you might expect less performance, but with the Kaveco Lilliput, it's small, but it does everything a regular fountain pen does. It writes amazing, it holds a decent amount of ink, it's ready to go anywhere, any place, at any time. It deserves a place in everyone's collection. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please comment and subscribe. Also, share it with somebody else who you think might like this channel. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know what you want to see in future videos in the comment section. Thank you very much.